You were rotting on a junk bin in a camera shop when I found you. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the Nicker mats. I have acquired quite a couple of Nicker mats from the junk shops, and um, here are some of them. And this is my favorite Nicker mat, and it's the black one. It's a fabulous camera, and um, it's very heavy. And it's very tough. Let's give him a name since it's fabulous and it's black. I shall call him Hollywood, the gay dude in the movie Mannequin. Okay, so Hollywood is an FTN and FT and the FTN is basically photomic new. You can easily see it by the engraved N on top of the meter window. Now, FTN doesn't mean free the nipple, although it sounds like it. It actually meant photomic new, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this is where I got some of the parts for Hollywood. I got this in a junk bin. If I'm not mistaken, I got the meter from this camera and some of the parts as well, just to fix Hollywood. Okay, so let's put the surrogate camera out of the way. Okay, let's go back to Hollywood. So, the Nicomat FT and the FTN runs by using the old mercury cells. And this is an adapter that you can use to change your 1.5 LR44 or rather convert it to 1.35 volts for the FTN and some other ca older cameras to use. If you don't convert it, you'll get faulty meter readings and that may also ruin your Nicromat. Okay, I'm not sure if Tony made a good video on the Nicromats, so do check his channel out. Now, <sighs> still tired from work, so there are people asking me about what's going on in my life. Because lately I haven't been posting stuff. Well, I just joined a new studio. And I'm working under the same roof. With two anime legends. Aramaki Shinji Sensei. And Kamiyama Kenji Sensei from the Ghost in the Shell fame. It's pretty tough working there, but it's pretty fun. Okay, so in front of us we have um, two Nikkor mats that I got from the junk box so they look pretty identical but this is an FT2 and this is an FT3 what is what are the differences you say so an FT2 uses this um, peg to link with your camera Sorry, with your lens rather. And you'll have to do the Nikon shuffle 
when you mount the lens just like this hold on let me find a spare part so this is a spare parts that I have so put it on F5.6 and um, made it to your body and then do this and check this out this is where it shows what aperture you are so what you want to do is crack it all the way in and crack it all the way back until the nicromat registered the aperture see this is a 28 lens so it's properly registered and that's how the Nicromat gets its meter reading. Okay. Now, for the FT3, it's similar to the original FM in the sense that it uses an AI tab or an AI coupling mechanism. And you can just click on the button and push the button and then lift the tab up for non-AI lenses now let's go back to the FT2 and see what's the difference between this and this cosmetically we have a few differences over here that you can obviously see now the most important thing is the FT2 and the FT3 both uses LR44 cells which is more environmentally friendly and easily available these days and another important thing is um, wait I just got a brain fart ah this thing you see you change your app, your shutter, not shutter speed, but film speed here in this little tab underneath. And in the FTN and earlier, you can just slide this thing left and right, and there's no lock in this mechanism, so you can accidentally move it and foul up your exposure starting from the FT2 you'll have to do this before you can change the film speed okay now I have the Nikomat EL which is totally different from the mechanical FT series because it's an electronic shutter camera we'll get to that one of these days it's a very wonderful camera to be honest now the purpose of our video is I'm going to show you how to appraise and check if your Nikromat is okay so if you have watched my FE video or series of videos then you can also apply whatever I said in those videos here. So one of the things that I would do is open the battery compartment. If this thing doesn't come out easily, you can get a strip of sticky type and um, you know let me find some sticky tapes here I don't have any but let's pretend that this is a sticky tape okay so stick it like this and then you jerk it really quick just like this and this will and this should come off there's a battery inside I think that was I think that's mine now if th that didn't work then you'll have to open the bottom cover 
by unscrewing these two screws is one, two, and then there's another one here I think. Okay, there's just two. And then pop this cover out and manually push on this thing from the inside. Okay, so you change the nickel mat's speed by using this dial. Just this just like the Olympus cameras of old. So what I would do is set it to the fastest speed and listen. If it's cocking and firing properly and it should be one one thousandth of a second and one five hundred should sound twice as slow and so on and so forth now the nickel mats use the cobalt square shutter which is very reliable they don't usually die out easily so you don't have to worry these things are tough okay so these are sounding properly at least to my ear you also want to check bulb okay you also want to see if the mirror returns properly now what I just did was I quickly ran through all the speeds and listen for any inconsistencies if you want to get deeper into that then you will have to watch my FT FE2 video because that's where I go through all the speeds one by one and just judging it by my ear if you want something really precise then you'll need a shutter speed tester I usually don't bring one when I go junk hunting but yeah that's how you would want to do it ideally okay so yeah that's it for the shutter speeds so the next thing you would want to do is pop in the battery and check if the meter works so you turn on the meter by doing this until the red button comes out or rather the the <coughs> red dot and as you can see it says minus meaning it's underexposed let's see if okay see see how the galvanometer move you want to see the galvan the galvanometer move smoothly and not jumping like this if it did that then the fre is probably dirty or maybe near dead so sometimes you'll see it do like th do something like this see see how it's gonna you know go back and forth like that observe the needle on the gal galvanometer so oh underexposed wait it died oh my god no Ah, because we're in bulb mode, that's probably why. Okay, let's turn it back on. Let's see. See? You'll sometimes see it do this. 
wherein it goes all the way to the left and then it's, it suddenly goes back to um, its starting position now that's kind of normal because they're basically going out of range of the meter sensitivity C now I don't know if that's how it is by design but it is what it is okay that's perfectly not that's perfectly normal now if you have a light meter you can put a lens over here and check to see if the meter is accurate now here's another thing that's very peculiar with all nickel mats I'm gonna cut the shutter okay now if I do this it won't fire because if you look at the um, advanced mechanism here, I don't have the um, cocking lever here, but the cocking lever has a, I don't know what you call that thing, a peg that stops the this thing from depressing when you have it overextended like this see I don't know why it's a feature see how it's catching it and when I lift my finger off the shutter button see how it goes back that's the plunger catching on that damn peg there must be a purpose to that I don't want to grind away mine and probably ruin my camera but it is what it is okay so it won't fire when you do this I, I've actually lost a lot of shots because of this but there you go and you'll also have to check the timer if it works wow that's a long time and then check the mirror up the mirror up is here the mirror up slide there you go it can be stuck sometimes or it can be hard so uh. okay there you go there's an easy way to fix this I'll show you later it's not really a fix but you know okay so next you would want to look at the film chamber well what do you know fungus some fungi that I'll have to clean and take a look at the pressure plate it should be scratched mine has a little bit of fungus damage and I'll polish it with some metal polish when I have the time and next you have to check for the shutter curtain and see some wrinkles look for some wrinkles or you know when sometimes sometimes people would accidentally press on this when loading film check for some dents now this one looks fine and snappy Cobalt S shutters are very tough. They will work even with slight dents and scratches. They're wonderfully made and they'll last you a lifetime. So these are made of plastic. Take up spool. If I'm not mistaken, these used to be metal in the older FT models, but don't quote me on that. Okay, so check the crank, see if it's smooth. And for cameras this age, there will be close to no foam here. You'll have to check my blog on how I did that, how I changed the foam of um, Hollywood, okay? So, one very annoying thing about the Nikromats is that 
It's very, very tough to clean junk inside the viewfinder. So, these things are usually riddled with fungi. Ah, take a look at this. Some fungi here. But don't worry, I'll open this thing one day and clean everything. Let's check inside. It's not really dirty, but I would want to clean that when I have the time. So here's the thing with knicker mats, going back to the thing that I want to say. You see, knicker mats don't have interchangeable screens, unlike the Fs. And uh, in order to clean whatever junk is inside there, we'll have to take this thing off, which is a pain in the ass. And um, dismantle the meter assembly and everything just so that you can clean this part and access the prism. As you can see, there's the galvanometer inside, it's just the reflection of the galvanometer. So, if it moves here, then it should move here too. So there you go. Let's make it move. So, there you go. It's basically just a reflection anyway. So it doesn't matter. Okay? There you go. By the way, it might be too dark for you to see. But at the bottom edge of the frame, you'll see your shutter speeds. It moves by way of a cord inside the finder mechanism. Oh, by the way, another difference with the F starting from the FT2 is you have an accessory shoe here which has a sink, it's a hot shoe basically, it has a sink terminal, and the old FTs don't. So you sink your flash using these things, okay, thank you Hollywood. Okay, I'll show you where the, okay, you see this black strip over here okay let's see if the camera will focus it's very small but there's actually prints of the shutter speed there so as you move your shutter dial this thing will move back and forth by the way this thing is kind of stuck or it's very hard but you can see as you move as you dial the in your shuttle shutter speeds that thing moves and oops Ugh. so yeah that thing should move here as well when you check the oh here it is you can actually see it from here it's very faint so it should move when you change your shutter speeds let me find a torch so that we can illuminate this thing Okay, I don't have a torch in my arm, within my arm's reach, but whatever. So check this out. Okay, pay attention to the what's inside the viewfinder. See? Did you notice that? It's actually moving. Now that should move and the shutter speeds should stay in the middle, I mean the correct shutter speed. If it's off by a bit then that strip of film that you see a while ago moving left and right is probably damaged or you will have to nudge it manually in order for you to get it properly and right in the center. It can be very delicate to be honest. Now, 
I'm going to show you some things that you can do when you get your nickel mat, okay? Sometimes, okay, hold on, let's take these two out of the way. There we go. Okay, sometimes this um, thing is out of focus. Okay, sometimes this um, aperture thing, I don't know what, you, I don't know what Nikon calls this thing, aperture coupling ring is stuck or it's very hard to turn that's because the grease inside here is bad and you'll have to remove all four screws here to remove this um, bayonet mount and clean the spring here and the catch you don't have to relube it but it would be nice if you do and it should work for perfectly fine one very common problem with, um, see how dirty this thing is, um, Nikon mat is that this thing gets stuck. See, this is the FT2, so, no, this is the FTN, so this thing doesn't have, shouldn't have a lock. But see how tough this is, this um, mm, film speed dial is to turn. See, the brackets aren't moving. You can actually see my fingernails bending already. It doesn't even have a lock. So, yeah, that's one problem. And uh, the shutter speed dial is so hard on this thing. Now, this is not actually a fix. The proper way to fix this is to open this thing up and remove everything and clean them separately but you'll have to remove these four screws and they are very difficult to remove. Now one quick solution is to use some naphtha or zipper oil. Zippo oil, just drop a little bit of that thing here and here too, just at the seams. Okay. Ouch. It hurts. Just turning this thing. I'm so delicate. See? See how much difference it did? You would want to massage it a bit. I'm actually wasting some good Zippo oil here, just for you to see. Okay, that's a huge improvement, right? And let's see if we can turn the shutter speed dial. See, I can turn it left and right. It's a little bit tough, but at least it's moving. Let me just put. A little bit more. That should soften up any of the added grease underneath it. Okay, see? I would sometimes even place one drop of oil here and here as well just to lubricate it a bit. Now, the mirror up button can be stuck at times. See? It's very hard to put it back. So, a little bit of naphtha. See? Now I can do it effortlessly. Now, this naphtha trick is not a be all end all solution for everything but if you're lazy that will probably work okay and one more thing that I want you to pay attention to is when you open the battery terminal 
make sure that there are no corrosions here sometimes the old battery will leak and the juice will corrode anything here sometimes you can see it sometimes you can't so what I'll do is I'll put my nose near this thing and sniff for any telltale signs of corrosion okay since this is a jump camera let's find a screwdriver let's see if I have one yeah okay I'm just going to show you how this thing looks like okay Yeah, remember what I said a while ago when the battery cover won't come off even with some sticky type as you remove the bottom cover just like this and pop it out from inside okay so yeah this is the slow governor and wait I'm not so sure if this is the slow governor or just a timer but whatever so this is how it looks and don't lose this thing okay I don't have a crank but oh boy let's find a pair of pliers this video started to get long huh Let's find a pair of pliers. Let's find a pair of pliers in my messy workspace. Ah, uh, here it is. It's actually a tool that I use to open up um, the AR <coughs> AR ring in the Nikon F. So, okay, let's do this. Hmm. Oh wait, the shutter's cup, that's why. Stupid. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. So, okay, let's cock this thing. Okay. see that's how it should work that's kind of painful doing it with your bare hands okay see if anything is trapped Okay, I'm just gonna do it from here. Okay, so take a look at this mechanism properly, okay? Should be very snappy. And this is your plunger, okay? Okay. It's very hard to see, but there's actually something going on here. And when you cut the shutter, ouch! Should see it engage the lock underneath it. Here, see, or at least listen to it, and then. It's not fully cut. Okay, so ah. Okay, there you go. Then hey, what happened?
Hmm. Looks like I've ruined my junk camera. I've turned it into a real junk. Okay, whatever. I just wasted five minutes of your life. Anyway, so that's it for the Nicomat FTM and um, how to check if it's still worth saving. Okay? So, the most important thing is check the meter, see if it's working. If it's not working, then you'll need a donor FT2 or a donor F another FT of the same make. And um, check the shutter speeds, although they rarely fail. But then you want to be safe. So remember, if the dials here and here and this um, aperture coupling thing is kind of stiff or stuck you can easily fix that using some zipper oil it's not the proper thing to, thing to do but it will work for now okay guys thank you for watching my video I'm so tired working at my new studio is very tiring so yeah i'm out of stamina okay see you guys next time thank you bye bye say goodbye to hollywood bye bye